Thank you guys. Um, I'm sorry, it's been a while. Welcome back to an episode of Tank Chats. First thing, so let's get right in. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the M8 light armored car today. Uh, you guys know the standard drill. We're gonna go through the tour of the front of the vehicle, the turret, then the sides, and then the rear. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right All in. All right, so getting a little bit into the history of the M8, uh, quote unquote, the uh, Greyhound. Um, it was developed by Ford Motor Company. It was first uh, designed in 1942 and produced from 1943 until 1944. And as of 2006, which I looked up, uh, some are actually still in service today, but this is a World War II era vehicle. So, uh, another part of the history of this vehicle, there are about 8,000 of these vehicles produced, a little over 8,000 produced through uh, their service life and developmental history. So, like I said, that area ranges between 1943 and 1945. But like I said, this is a World War II era vehicle. It is meant as a lightly armored car. Um, and it was designed for armored cavalry units and uh, uh, also scouting and like infantry units. This would usually, they would be assigned to uh, anti-tank companies, uh, armored cavalry, and armored regiments. Um, and we'll get into that, which actually, which regiment this vehicle is from here in so, a little bit. As part of the 8,000 that were produced, the over 8,000 that were produced, 1,000 were actually sent over in Lendlease to the United Kingdom. And um, that's where they actually got the nickname Greyhound. Some of the uh, crews were uh, upset with the armor performance. So crews would actually, when I looked up, was that we put sandbags down inside the hull because they were vulnerable to mines. So this would help uh, reduce the shrapnel and damage to the vehicle. And uh, that's why how they got one of their nicknames was the Greyhound because they were so light and fast. We'll get to that here in a little bit. But um, it was first deployed in 1943 into Sicily with US and uh, United Kingdom forces in Sicily, in Italy, where they, Perform very well, like I said, they're mostly used in armored cavalry or reconnaissance regiments and for basic like uh, combat control things like that. Um, they are used in the European theater as well. Again, it's mostly supplied to armored cavalry regiments, and um, they saw action all the way up until the end of World War II, and even some being sent over into the Pacific. Uh, such notable battles as like the Battle of Okinawa and uh, like the Road to Berlin. A lot of the battles like that towards the end of World War II, and then of course in the Italian theater of operations. So after World War II, these actually were um, used as like uh, border protection, guard duty, kind of like when the Cold War started. Um, some were just put as like um, kind of like line slash base defense in the Cold War. And then when Korea broke out, um, they were actually sent over to Korea as well. So these vehicles were also used in Korea. And even as far as up to Vietnam, M20s and M8s, the M20 is a variant of this vehicle without a turret. But it's just a uh, command, like a command uh, reconnaissance center kind of deal in the vehicle. Um, they were actually used all the way into Vietnam by the Arvin forces. So as like late as 1962, some of these were still being used like in combat and they started out in combat during the Vietnam War. They actually supplied a ton of these to them. And then they were used by a bunch of other uh, foreign countries and stuff up through the 70s. Like I said, all the way up to 2006, there were still some in service, heavily modified, but they are still technically in service as of 2006. But as far as I know, I don't think they are in service anymore. So some third world countries still might be using these because it's a cheap light vehicle. Um, so that basically is, covers the history of this vehicle. Um, one of the notable, uh, notable battles that was actually 2CR was a part of, that we are a part of, these vehicles were actually used in the Battle of uh, Neuville, France, where they helped hold off the, uh, the, uh, one of the Panzer divisions there that was trying to go through. And uh, that's how they got one of the nicknames of the Ghosts of Patton's Army because they could appear behind the enemy lines at will. And they actually held them off, a considerable uh, Panzer force off for a few days. So that's pretty much the history of this vehicle, you guys. With that, we're gonna get into the tour. Alright, so hopping into the tour of the vehicle, you guys, we got the front plate here, uh, up to an inch thick of armor, um, and you got the big old uh, US service star on there. 
You got your brush guards for your fender lights. Your fender lights got blackout markers, just like today's vehicles, and your regular headlights. You got your bolt lifting plugs here. And these hatches could actually lift. You can see the viewports here. If you want to get a shot of the viewports. You see the viewports here, but these hatches would actually lift up from this area. Both of these could actually open up and the crew could sit open hatch. All right, so as I was talking about the front hatches earlier, this is where your driver would sit. So he would have his steering wheel and stuff in there, it would just be like a regular car. And then this would be your assistant driver over here or radio operator. And then when we got to the curb, we'll go into more into the detail of crew positions. But this crew, this vehicle had a crew of four, and up there would be your gunner and your commander, and the commander would serve as a loader. So um, right here, you got some little uh, side mounts for like flags or other little accessories that they want to put on the vehicle. Uh, you got your tow, tow mounts here. And based off of these markings, if you want to get a shot, these vehicle would be uh, 3rd Armored Cavalry, 42nd Cavalry Regiment. Bravo 3-1 would be, it would be Bravo Company Tank or Bravo Squadron Tank, 3rd uh, Platoon, 1st Vehicle. So. That's pretty much it for the front of the vehicle, you guys. Um, with that, we're gonna hop up into the turret. All right, guys, so hopping right up onto the turret here. As you can see, normally this vehicle would have been an open top vehicle, but in this case, they actually have a steel covering over the top. This would protect crews from uh, IDF, indirect fire, anything like that. Right here, we got the mount for the 50 cal or 30 caliber machine gun. If they wanted to put that, the crews could put that here. And really simple, right there is a spot for a spotlight if the crews wanted to put a spotlight on the vehicle. So you come around to the front over here, Turret. Right here is where the spot for the 30 caliber machine gun would be. So it could have up to two 30, 30 caliber machine guns, or it could have a 50 and a 30 caliber machine gun. Right here is where the gunner's sight would be. And in here in the turret, this is where your gunner would sit. The commander would sit over here and act as a loader. The ammo would be stored back here, and he could load M6 37 millimeter cannon for uh, firing purposes. And then as we saw earlier, that is your driver's position and your co-driver's position. As for mentioned for the turret, you guys, with that, we're going to hop down. We're going to get into the side. All right, so hopping into the side of the vehicle, you guys, as you can see, it's not tracks. It's a, uh, it is a wheeled vehicle because this is technically qualified as an armored car. So you got the six-wheel system here. It is a synchro mesh leaf spring suspension system um, with four speeds, uh, four speed and then one reverse speed. Uh, right here on the side, you got the side skirts covering the wheel. The big old US service car on there. That was just like to keep dust and stuff out from inside the transmission and in there. Um, right here, this is actually a stowage box. Uh, I don't know if it'll stow up or not. I think she's pretty much sealed shut. This will just be stowage for any um, any extra equipment or anything like that. And um, you have the serial number of the vehicle right here. Right here is also a storage bustle. And right here, these are both storage racks. And you also got your front fenders up here. And I forgot to mention on the turret earlier, but this also would be, this is like this little turret ring right here. It would just be used to mount other equipment like bags, sandbags, fuel cans, anything like that. They would just put on the side bustle rack of the, uh, of the vehicle. So that pretty much does it for the side, you guys. With that, we'll get in the back. All right, so hopping into the back of the vehicle, you guys, right here, we got, this is obviously the, this is obviously the radiator for the engine back here. So the engine was a Hercules JXD6 four-cylinder gasoline engine. Um, with about 110 horsepower. Uh, I could crank this baby up to about 55 miles an hour. If you take the speed governor off the no fun switch, I reckon she could probably get up to about 60, 65 miles per hour if she really wanted to. You have your tow mounts back here and your main tow mount right here for this vehicle needed to tow something. And she actually still works nice and well. So you would apply the tow hook into here, close it up. You have your rear blackout marker lights and your reverse lights, just like on today's vehicle. More iron bolt lifting plugs. And your same markings as on the front of the vehicle um, are copied back here, as well as the U.S. Service Star. And with that, that pretty much does it for the uh, back of the vehicle, you guys. Not too much to show and talk about. Um, but that's what's uh, on the back, you guys. And obviously right here, um, this spot would be for your exhaust to come out. So the exhaust would actually come out through here. So with that, we're going to go close out this video. Hey, guys, there's a bunch of Germans coming. I got to love the machine gun. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Tank Chats. This was episode nine. We thank you very much. I hope to see you guys in the next one. It was great to get back out and do another one of these videos. But with that, let's go take this baby for a ride.